scripture reading this morning is met his Romans 6 verse 19 I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh for as you have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and the iniquity unto iniquity even so now you remember servants to righteousness unto holiness. Good morning. This past week, a lady that I know put a gun to her head and shot herself in the head, and she's dead. I don't know why she did that. When I was a teenager, I rode the bus with a friend of mine, and his daddy worked on cars, and he worked on our car a whole lot because our car uh, needed a lot of work. It's a mechanic. He went into school one day, and they said, you hear what Billy did? I said, I have no idea what had happened to Billy. Well, he shot himself in the chest with a rifle. He made it out to the front porch looking for help, called for help, but it was too late. Billy died on the porch. And it was kind of strange for me to go to the funeral home and see him lying in a casket. You know, we have a problem. A lot of people know about people who have killed themselves. But we have people in this very county, in this country, in this world, that are killing themselves every single day by chasing the dragon. Chasing the dragon is a term that's used by uh, folks referring to drug abuse. People chase the dragon. And they, if they don't kill themselves, they certainly ruin their lives. Chasing the dragon, I uh, looked that up and see what it means to chase the dragon about drug abuse. And what that is, it came from uh, heating up heroin, a powdery substance that you turn into a liquid and then it comes into an, a vapor. And then you round up a, a foil uh, funnel and you, when that vapor comes up, you chase that dragon and sniff that vapor into your body. But a term that I remember it being is the fact that a person who uses drugs for the very first time, they get into a high. They reach a place of euphoria that they've never had before. Why? Because it's working, it's a chemical, and it's doing something to your brain. And when you hit that euphoria, then next time you want to do it again. But as you do it over and over again, you, you cannot reach that place ever again. Because once your brain, once your body acclimates to that, then it's impossible to achieve that feeling of euphoria that you got the first time you used that chemical. And that's cause. But you keep doing it. You keep on trying. You, you'll do it until your body dies, and that's called chasing the dragon. You're constantly chasing to get back that sense of euphoria. Now, why do people do that? I don't know. I just don't understand it. So this past week, I've become quite depressed. Uh, with Danny's death and the funeral, that's depressing enough, but doing the research on this, as I looked into that, uh, I found facts about drug use and drug abuse. I read a whole lot about what's going on in our country concerning drugs and the abuse of drugs. I listened to a whole bunch of testimony of people who have been on drugs and have been affected by drugs because of their family. I've got some uh, information for some local uh, professionals on the issue, and I've also talked to some folks and texted with folks that I have spiritual connection with, that I respect their opinion. How can you uh, say something like this? How, what do we need to, how do you approach like that? And got some information there. But folks, it is a deep, deep hole, and I didn't even touch the surface of it. I Googled the phrase, because I've heard the phrase chasing the dragon, and I've heard what it meant about trying to seek that elusive high, but I Googled the phrase, chasing the dragon. And I learned that the FBI, several years ago, made a video. And that video, they named it Chasing the Dragon. I didn't know that. I haven't seen this video, but I watched it. It's about 47 minutes long, and I recommend that, I, of course, I can't go through this, 47, but, I, but I recommend that you kids and young people and parents 
Go find that on YouTube. It's called Chasing the Dragon, uh, made by the FBI, The Life of an Opiate Addict. And they interview that, uh, and, and kids, be sure, there's some graphic stuff on there, so be sure you get your parents' permission to see it. And maybe your parents, you might want to watch it with them, because there's one lady there that she can't control her, her language. But it's, it's very, very uh, eye-opening when you, when you watch that. But on that video, there's an FBI agent that comes up, and he says something that kind of shocked me. He said, um, by far, he said, I've, I've been in this for years. I've seen addicts, and I've seen the drug world. He said, and by far, that's the word that he used, the most addictive drug was oxycodone. Oxycodone is an opioid. An opioid is made out of poppy, omium, opium poppy. It's a plant that you can go and harvest. People grow it, and they make this oxycodone. And it's used to help people when they have problems. Uh, they go to the doctor, and they get prescribed. You see, this is a medical prescription and take so many of these every so many hours, and then this, this terrible surgery that you've just been through is going to be painful when you get home. Uh, you can take this, and it'll help you with your pain. And so people do. But here's what the drugabuse.gov says. Roughly 21% to 29% of patients that are prescribed oxycodone and opioids like that misuse them. That means about one in five or one in three people. When the doctor sends you home with some medicine, oxycodone, for your pain relief, one in three of you or one in five of you will abuse it. You won't use it the way it's supposed to be. And so what happens to those one in three folks, they keep taking it. And so their, their surgery is healed but they enjoyed the feeling that they got from oxycodone, this opioid. So they take two of them, and then they take three of them, and then they take six of them, and, and then they, they run out of the prescription, and, and then they go, and, and, what can I do now? And so what a lot of po people do, they move from the opium poppy to heroin. Heroin is also a opioid. It's a derivative of morphine. And so what people do, they say, well, I can't afford the oxycodone or I can't get my hands on it anymore because I've written all the prescriptions. Some people steal prescription from doctors and write fake prescription and go to pharmacists and get it filled and take it that way. But they run out of their resources. They can't do it anymore. So they said, I got to have a fix. So they get another opioid substance, and that's heroin because heroin is very easy to access. I didn't know that, but it is. It's very easy to access, and it's a lot cheaper than oxycodone and pills like that. In fact, you can get them in these little packets, and you can get them, uh, you can sniff them up your nose. You snort them in your nose, I understand. Or you can turn them into a liquid over a spoon. Take you a, uh, a lighter, and I'm telling young people how to do this, and I'm sorry about that. But this is how it's done. And then you draw it up in a needle and stick it in your arm. Or you make it into a vapor and smoke and, and, and do it like that. But here's the problem. With these prescription oxycodone pills, you know how many milligrams is in there. You got it from a doctor, and he put this particular pill, and, and, and you know I'm taking so many milligrams of this oxycodone. With this heroin, it's a pattern. You don't know how much you're sucking into your nose. You don't have a measurement of how much you're shooting. Maybe you're in that syringe, but here's what you don't know. You don't know if that powder is... 100% grade heroin, how pure it is, or how diluted it is with other things. You don't know. So when you suck that up into that needle, and you've got, well, I'm taking so many milligrams, you stick it in your arm. You don't know. And that leads a lot of people to overdosing because they just don't know. So, well, I don't want to go the opioid route because I realize that's very, very uh, dangerous, it's, uh, it's very, very addictive, and it could cause me a lot of problems, I will get into uh, places like meth. Meth is uh, not an opioid. 
Meth is a CNS drug. CNS drugs affect the central nervous system. So I'll go that route. I'll just get me some meth. And when you get meth, I understand from one person I talked to, just one use of meth, you can be hooked on it. You can't, it does something to your brain, and you're stuck on it. And 47,600 people died of opioid-related overdoses in 2017, but only 10,000 people died from meth. Now, you should think, well, if only 10,000 die from meth and 47,000 die from opioid, I'll just let meth be my drug of choice. Other people say, well, I'm not going to take meth. That's a central nervous system. I'm going to get co cocaine. It's not an opioid. It's, 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 it's something that I can take, and it numbs my nose, and it does some things to my brain, and, and I'll take that. 1.5 million people in the United States are on cocaine right now. And it doesn't matter if they're poor, young, it doesn't matter, rich, old, it doesn't matter if from all walks of life in the United States. That's a problem in and of itself. But here's what's become the, the big problem. Fentanyl. You might have heard that on the news. Fentanyl. It is the leading cause of drug overdoses in the United States right now. And here's what happens. Over 150 people a day, I want to say that again, 150 people a day die of fentanyl overdose. You say, well, that's stupid. Why not take cocaine? Why not take meth? Why not even take oxycodone? It's bad, but maybe if fentanyl is so bad. Why not take it? Because people don't know they're taking it. Here's what the drug dealers are doing across our borders, and we, we blame the border, and the border certainly is a place where fentanyl is just pouring over. But it's coming into our country in a variety of ways. But here's what those drug dealers are doing. They're saying, hey, people want this uh, oxycodone, uh, but I, we don't make it legally. We make it illegally. We, we don't make it by the channels that the doctors buy it with this prescription and so many milligrams and, and it's so pure by the FDA standards or whoever standards. We're going to make it ourselves. So they'll go out and make a pill and it's got the oxycodone in it, but they, what they call lace it. They lace it with fentanyl. Lacing it means they put a little bit of fentanyl in it. So that when this person on the street buys this pill, oh, it's oxycodone. I got that out of my mother's cabinet, and, and I took it then. I'll take this oxycodone now. Here's what they don't know. They don't know that it's got fentanyl in it, and so they take it. When they get their cocaine, it's been laced many times with fentanyl. Even meth, when people sell that stuff out on the streets. They lace it just a little bit with fentanyl. Why do they do that? To give them, the users, a extra high so that they will go back for more and get more. The street names for fentanyl is Apache. Parents, listen to this, these names. Because if you hear it uh, in your conversation at home or maybe around on the street, they're talking about fentanyl. Apache, dance fever, Friend, good fella, jackpot, murder eight, tango and cash. That's the street names for this horrible drug. This drug is tasteless. You can't taste it. It's odorless. You can't smell it. And it's a synthetic opioid. It's man-made, this stuff. The DEA which is the Drug Enforcement Administration. They say that it really gives an intense and short-term effect, and they have proven that it has been added to all of these different forms of drugs. In fact, last year, they have seized, listen, nine million pills, and they all contained fentanyl. Oh, we got that oxycodone off the street, but it's got fentanyl in it. We got this off the street, but it's got fentanyl in it. 
Fentanyl is absolutely dangerous. Why is it so dangerous? It only takes two milligrams of fentanyl to kill you. This penny, that little white dot to the right, is all it takes to kill you. So if you take an oxycodone that has fentanyl laced in it, and you take three of them, six of them, whatever you take, you may be taking enough fentanyl to kill you. Some people suggest that even marijuana can be laced with it. There's a lot of argument about that. No, you can't find marijuana that's been laced with fentanyl. But when you're drug trafficking and you're putting, in my mind, this is not, but in my mind, if you're moving fentanyl across the border into this country and you're also moving marijuana at the same time and they come in contact with one another, you know there might be some danger there. You just don't know. Because drug use and abuse is everywhere. It's all over this world. 2% of the entire world is hooked on drugs. That's a lot of people, folks. There are 195 countries, depending on how you define countries. There's 195 countries in the world. Ten of those countries, just ten, of those 195 countries, 10 of them have half of the drug abuse in the whole world. And the top of the list of the 10 is the United States of America. We have more problems with drug abuse in America than anywhere in the whole world. 46%, that's almost half. Half of the Americans in this country have a family member or a close friend who is or has been addicted to drugs. In this audience, you either know somebody or they're your family member or somebody that's even OD'd. Overdose, death, young people, is what that means. You know, COVID really was a bad thing since 2020. Horrible thing. We counted those deaths. There have been 350,831 deaths attributed to COVID. And we're shocked by that. Just like we're shocked when we hear that somebody killed themselves. And we're shocked by that huge number, 350,831 people attributed to COVID deaths. How horrible that is. We need to act. We need to do something. Since 1999, 750,000 people have died with a drug overdose. In a, it's, it's, it, and that's in America. That's not worldwide. That's in America alone. 750,000 people. Today is 9-11. And we're shocked by what happened at 9-11. Horrible thing happened at 9-11. And we ring a bell for all of those deaths of the folks that died during 9-11 in, in the variety of places that they were in. And they named their name and we ring a bell. And then we should. We, we honor that. And we're shocked by it. There were 2,977 people who died that day on 9-11. Just last year, there were 107,600 people in America that died with a drug overdose. And you say, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, that's bad, that's terrible, uh, and I get it, and we're sad about all of that. But that's over yonder, that's out there, that's in New York, Chicago, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles, and California, it's all out yonder, right? 529 people died last year in Mississippi. 
with a drug overdose. That's 49% higher than it was the year before. That means it's moving in. That means it's ramping up. It's happening even faster. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's the delta. That's out yonder. That's over yonder. That's in the south and north and, and, and way out west. That's not here in Tishomingo County. Last week, three people died with a drug overdose. One of them was 42 years old. Another one was 41 years old. And another one was 38 years old. It's happening right here in our back door. And it's getting worse. Well, somebody ought to do something about it. We ought to really make a move on it. We ought to pour into it like we did COVID and like we did the 9-11. We, we really responded to that. In June the 18th, 1971, Richard Nixon stood up and declared a war on drugs. That's how bad it is. We need to do something about that. We need to declare a war on drugs. And it was a global campaign. It wasn't just, just America. It was a global campaign. But America led the way. America said, yes, sir, absolutely. We're going we're gonna to really push this thing. And not only are we going to ramp up military if they grow poppy, opium poppy, illegally, we're going to get the military on them. And not only are we going to uh, do police action, in fact, that's when the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, was created in 1971 in order to fight the war on drugs. We're going to do all this. We're going to make a move. And not only all that, uh, throw people in jail for the, what we're going to do is help people get off of the drugs. We're going to encourage them not to even do the drugs. Today, over 40, listen, over 45% of the people who are in jail are in jail today. 45%, that's almost half. Almost half the people in jail are from drugs. We're still at war. People would rather go to jail than to get help to get off drugs. Only one in 10 Americans who have a drug or alcohol problem get the help that they need. Just one in 10. Why? Maybe they don't want the help. I work with, a, from time to time, I teach a Bible class for a, a, a place that tries to help people get off drugs. There's a fellow that came in, and he's just one of many, but there's this one guy that came in, stayed less than two weeks, and he left. He was in a place that could help him, but he left. Why? He didn't want to be helped. Or maybe they want to be helped, but they, they don't know where to get the help. Or maybe they know where to get it, but they can't get it for some reason or the other. It's a problem, a big problem. In 2020, 49 million Americans use marijuana. 10 million use the CNS drug, central nervous system drug. That's an amphetamine or meth or Ritalin and Adderall abused it. 9.5 million used opioids. 9.3 million used some sort of uh, abuse some sort of prescription pain reliever. Seven million people even used an hallucinogen. That's the LSD and the PCP that you've heard about. That's not even talking about Xanax that has treats uh, anxiety disorders that people abuse. Folks, in 1981, America spent one billion dollars fighting the war on drugs. In 2020, they spent $34.5 million in that year. Just one year fighting it. From 1971 to for 2021, that's 50 years now on this war on drugs. America has spent over a trillion dollars trying to fight it. And we're still fighting it. In 2022, this year, 
By the end of this year, we are going to have spent $41 billion in one year trying to fight this thing. It is a problem. And it's coming on up. Well, when those hippies of the 60s, when they get out and they die, those, those baby boomers, when they're all out, everything's going to be all right, right? No, our youth is on drugs. Our youth, our young people are on drugs. Listen to these facts. 12% of 8th graders right now are using marijuana. 30 or 29 percent of 10th graders are using it, and 35 percent of seniors, 12th graders, are using it. Vaping, this vaping of nicotine, it's a drug. 16 and a half percent of 8th graders are doing it. 30 percent of 10th graders and 35 percent of 12th graders are doing it. When it comes to Oxycontin, which is an opioid like oxycodone, you say, well, surely our kids are not popping those pills. 1.2% of 8th graders are doing it. That's amazing. 2% of 10th graders are popping those pills. 1.7% of our seniors are doing it. And all these other drugs that you hear about, cocaine, meth, and synthetic cannabis, you know, that's a, a man-made marijuana that's out there. I think they call it spi spice. It's, a, it's something that you make that's actually a man-made marijuana. It's a synthetic cannabis. Our kids don't do that. Well, wait just a minute. 14% of our kids in the eighth grade are doing that. 31% tenth graders are doing it. And 38% of twelfth graders are doing it. And so these drug dealers who are pulling it into our country, they say, oh, this is a, this is a good market. It surely is. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make it better for our young people to get it. So they come up with this. Rainbow fentanyl. It looks like sweet tarts or maybe sidewalk, sidewalk chalk. Colorful. And they're getting our kids hooked on it. 70% of drug users who are 13 years old and younger, if they'll do this, by the time they're 20, they're hooked on drugs. They're hooked on it. 70% will be hooked on drugs if they do this. Now somebody says, well, I never wanted to be. I mean, if you ask a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? How many are going to say, well, I want to be a, a dopehead. I want to be hooked on drugs. I want to die of an overdose. How many say that? Nobody will say that. Then why do they do it? The number one reason that most people end up in this shape is because a friend or a relative or somebody that they trust or looked up to gives it to them. Maybe you're over at a friend's house one day. You went into the bathroom. You opened up the cabinet. There's your mom's oxycodone that she got sent home from the doctor because she had her wisdom teeth pulled. Your friend looks over at you and said, let's try one of these. Everybody's doing it. Okay, I'm going to try one of those. And you do try it. And then you're chasing the dragon from then on. You feel a little bit depressed. You feel a little bit down. Things aren't going your way. Maybe you failed a test. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a spouse. I don't know. Some things feel bad. And then you come to your friend, and your friend says, Oh, take this pill. I happen to have one. It'll make you feel better. And you take the pill. It does make you feel better. In fact, it makes you feel euphoric. And you start chasing the dragon from then on. You're at a great job. You're at an office. You're an office. You make all kinds of money. You're doing really well. Your family's doing great. And then you twist your ankle one day and it hurts. And you cripple off into the office. And one of your coworkers comes up to you, somebody you trust, somebody you, you know, hey, this will make you feel better. Take this pill. It'll make that pain go away. And you take it. And from then on, you're chasing the dragon. And folks, while you were chasing that dragon, see that fellow chasing his tail? He's chasing that dragon. Let me have, let me get it. While you were chasing that dragon, let me tell you what happened. That dragon's chasing you. You lost your education. You quit studying. You quit school. Why? It didn't matter anymore. You lost your job because they couldn't depend on you, so they fired you. 
You lost your family. Because you didn't care about your wife or your husband. You didn't even care about your kids. The only thing you cared about is chasing that dragon. You got to get the dragon. And you lost your health. You're in and out of the hospital because you're so sick from those chemicals that you're putting in your body. You have to go to the hospital so much in that uh, FBI thing. One of the stories was a woman couldn't hit a, a vein. She couldn't find another vein because they'd all collapsed. And her friend said, you got a vein? You can put the heroin in? What vein? I've done lost them all. She says, your jugular vein. Stick it in your neck. And she did. And immediately, her heart stopped beating. She overdosed. They took her to the hospital. Brought her back. She woke up. She got up. She walked out of the hospital. She walked down to her drug dealer, bought heroin. He sold it to her. She was still in her hospital gown with an IV stuck to her. And then she took it. And you said, well, how did she take it? She couldn't find a vein. And she certainly juggled her vein. You know what she did? She used her IV bag. It was a freebie to her. Several times. Because she's chasing that dragon. You lose your self-worth. You'll beg. You'll borrow. Please, loan me $5. Loan me $50. Loan me $20. Please, I'll pay you back. All you're going to do is chase the dragon with it. You don't care. As long as they'll loan it to you. As long as you can beg it from somebody. Maybe they'll give it to you. You lose your self-worth. And you lose your morality because then you'll go to stealing. You'll steal from anybody. A stranger. Your friend, you'll steal from your mama because you're chasing the dragon. You lose your freedom. You go to jail. And you swear, I'll never, ever do it again. If I can just have a second chance, I'll never do it again. In that film, several of them got out of jail. And within hours, they found their drug dealer because they're still chasing that dragon. One of them six days later, was found with a needle in her arm, dead. And maybe you didn't chase the dragon. You took that pill. Oh, yes. You were at a party, maybe. And heroin was being shown privately. Don't let the teachers, don't let the people know. Look, I got some heroin. You don't even know how to use it. What do you do? Sniff it? I saw that before in the movies. What do you do? Lick it? What do you do? Well, your friends showed you how to do it. And you wanted to be good to your friends, so, so, so you did it. And it was laced with fentanyl, and you died. You didn't chase the dragon. The dragon got you. Folks, every generation deals with drugs. Every generation in human history deals with drugs. Even in the Bible. The Bible. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, it says, Let me tell you something. Stay away from witchcraft. The Greek word is pharmakeia. We get our word pharmacist. We get our word pharmacy from that. Witchcraft is drug use. You remember on the, on the uh, t- television or on the pictures, that witch has got her boiling pot and she's putting stuff in it, she's stirring it. That's drugs. Stay away from that. Revelation chapter 18, verse 23, sorceries, pharmakeia. Revelation 9, 21, Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 22, 15, all of that is sorcery, witchcraft, pharmakeia. Stay away from all of that, the Bible says. They were dealing with that in the Bible. And our generation has the same choice to make. And remember this. When you're standing at that crossroads, young people, old people, you're standing there and you're fixing to make a choice. You're going to go left or you're going to go right. That's your choice. It's not just the choice to try a pill. Or it's not just a choice to shoot up a little heroin in your body or something. It's a path that you're choosing. It's just not an instant where you make a choice tonight or today. You are choosing the path that you're going to take. And people choose their path primarily on two things. To avoid pain or to access pleasure. You think about it. 
everything that you've ever done in your whole life, you did it to avoid pain. Your daddy said he'd whoop you if you didn't do this or did that. Or to access some pleasure. Well, I'm going to eat that pie. Every decision that you make is to avoid pain or to access pleasure. Here's the problem with that. When you make that path, you make that choice. Oh, I've got this problem and, and I'm going to get me some pills to get out of this pain. Before too long, it becomes more painful. Because you're in a trap. Oh, I'm going to take this pill to get me some pleasure. I'm going to get me a high. Before too long, you're chasing that dragon and you can never reach it and it gets more painful. People will stay, they take drugs to get off the pain that the drug is calling them. It's a circle. Now you've got to remember some things about the choices that we make. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 4 says this, Every creature of God is good. Think about it. Every creature, nothing to be refused. Opium poppy is good. God made it, it grew, it's wonderful. He, he made it and said all things are good. It's to, if it's received with thanksgiving. Folks, I love a good sausage and biscuit. Don't you? I, I, some of you may not, but I do. I love a good sausage and biscuit. But if I'm 400 pounds and I'm eating four sausages and biscuit every meal, I'm abusing sausages and biscuits. Oh, that's good. I love oxycodone. When I had a surgery some time ago, the doctor gave me oxycodone. I was hurting. I called him up. I said, I'm hurting. I'm bleeding out of the place. And he said, well, did you take your oxycodone? And I said, no, I'm kind of scared of that. You know, from what they tell me. Well, take one. I took one. I felt great. No more pain. I was avoiding pain. Thank God for that oxycodone. Fentanyl. Oh, it's terrible. It's awful. But let me tell you what's happening. People with cancer, fentanyl is 50 to 100 times more powerful and potent than morphine. Morphine. And if a cancer patient is not responding to morphine because of the pain, you can give them a fentanyl patch and they'll feel better. Thank God for fentanyl patches. It's when we abuse it. We need to exercise some self-control in our choice making. Philippians 4 verse 5 talks about moderation. Galatians 5 23 talks about being temperate, self-control. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 says temperance, self-control. Be smart about your decision making. Oh, but it's... I saw this sign when I was doing my research, and it was a, 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 a protest group that said, hey, we want drugs to be legal and all that. And one guy held up a sign, and he said, my mind, my body, my choice. Folks, it may be his choice, but that's not his mind and body. God gave him that, and he's hurting more and more people than just himself or herself. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that's in you? Listen, you have it from God. God gave it to you. You are not your own. Your body don't belong to you. So in 1 Corinthians 6, 10, he said, Don't be a drunkard, or you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans 13, verse 13 says, Walk honestly, not in riotous or drunkenness. You can't do that. Ephesians chapter 4, 5, verse number 18. Ephesians 5, 18 says, Don't be drunk with wine, alcohol, or maybe some other drug. He says, Be filled with the Spirit, not with this stuff. Galatians 5, 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit, if you get drunk on the Spirit, here's what you got. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. That's the path of real pleasure, the spiritual path. That'll bring you real love, real goodness, real joy, real peace. That's where the pleasure comes from. Not the path of pleasure seeking through drugs or alcohol or all of these things. In fact, even if you're trying to avoid pain, oh, but it's so bad, and it is bad. We have a lot of problems in our country. There's a lot of pressures out there right now, especially with young people. But let me tell you, over time... When you're trying to deal with that pain, 
with excess of dope, it's just more painful. Deal with the pain, and we'll talk about this tonight, with the excess of spiritual things. Romans chapter 6, verse 16 says, Do you not know whom you yield yourself to be a servant? That's who you are a servant to. If it's a sin to death or obedience to right, who you yield yourself to be a slave to, that's who you're a slave. Whichever path you take, that's the path you're on. And you get to make that choice. It's true of all sin. We're talking about chemicals today. But folks who are chasing that dragon of drugs, alcohol, all these things that we talked about today, there will come a point when you have no choice. The choice will be removed from you. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 says, They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't choose the path of spiritual things. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That means a depraved mind. And pretty soon, you choose to use. That's your choice. Or you'll get high or you'll die. That's your choice. Second Peter, or rather 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, You better be sober. Sober there means uh, watch yourself. Be wise. Clear mind. Have clarity. You better have clarity. You better be vigilant. You better be on your toes, guys. Why? Your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. Walking about, just seeing whom he can get. You want some fentanyl? You want some rainbow fentanyl? You want some of these drugs? You'll feel better. You got a broke ankle? Let me give you some of my drugs. It's in my mama's cabinet. Here, take one. Be careful. Be vigilant. He's a roaring lion. He's just looking whom he may devour. Well, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says that Satan is called a dragon. Folks, while you're chasing that dragon, that dragon is chasing you. And he'll get us. He certainly will get us. We got a choice. Hell or heaven. Now folks, when you're talking about pain, hell is ultimate pain. When you're talking about pleasure, heaven is ultimate pleasure. That is the choice. That's the most perfect choice. Who would not want to take the path to heaven instead of the path to hell? The choice is clear. Should be clear. But people get in such a shape. Oh, I need something more. Folks, we have everything we need right here, right now, to be happy. In the Spirit, choose the Savior, not the dragon. He loves you. You are a piece of life that is so special that God loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. And you have hope of such wondrous beauty waiting on you. Why would you not choose the Savior? You can do that right here and right now. Why don't you come? Why together we stand aside? A lot and early on your